All right, so yesterday we talked about sequences where you were adding something every time, and today we're going to talk about sequences where you're multiplying by something every time. Now, you should have out your gold reference sheet so you know where the formulas are on there. Um, the notes start by asking for a definition and example of a geometric sequence. I made up something here that says an ordered list of terms with a common ratio. In other words, you're multiplying by something. Okay. And then we're going to pick some numbers and make up a sequence. Somebody pick a first number. Anybody have a favorite number? Okay. And, whoops, the other thing we're supposed to pick is an R value. We don't want anything too ginormous. We could do a negative. You want to just stick with like three. So, this sequence that we're making up here would go 4, and then you would multiply by 3, so you would get 12, and then you'd multiply by 3, and then you'd multiply by 3, I want to say 108, I hope that's right, someone check me. But that's what our sequence is going to look like for our examples, is everybody okay? Any questions? Did you check me, Ben? 36 times 3? Is that 108? Or were you on your phone? I thought you were on your calculator. All right. In general, we write a geometric sequence. You start with the first term, and then you multiply by that ratio, and then you multiply again. And when you multiply a second time by something, you can write it as squared, right? And then if you multiply it a third time, you could write it as cubed. So the explicit form, as stated on your reference sheet, is to find any term, you take the first term times r to the n minus 1. Remember how geometric looked like this? You said you took the first term and you add the difference n minus 1 times. Well, when you multiply by something n minus 1 times, it's a power. Does that make sense, guys, that you're multiplying? So it's a power. All right. This was the geometric one. Now, I would highly suggest that when you think of this, you practice thinking of this in a parenthesis because we will have fractions and negative numbers, and those both have to be written in parentheses when you put them in your calculator. But this is what it looks like on the reference sheet. And again, just so you remember, that is the explicit one, not the recursive one. All right, so can we do the one we just did a second ago real quick? We would say to find any term, we took the first term, was it 4? I forgot already. Okay, 4. And the r we chose was 3 to the n minus 1. Can I simplify that to say 12 to the n minus 1? If you have 3 times 2 to the third, do you go 6 to the third? What does the order of operations say? Exponents before multiplying, right? We can't simplify this to 12 to the n minus 1. Is everybody good with that? I don't know why when it becomes something like this, if that was the example, then students suddenly think it's okay to do 4 times a half. It's never okay when there's an exponent to simplify the multiplication. Everybody good? Oh, sorry, that wasn't what I meant to do. All right, then we're going to talk about recursive quick. Does anybody remember? I think I called yesterday, like, this is, you're going to explain this to your fifth grade sister or something, is the recursive kind. You would say, I have a sequence that starts with, so you need the first term, and then to get to the next term, 
sister, you would do this. Okay? So you have to tell me the first term, and then you have to tell me how to get to the next term using, what do we say when we see n minus 1? Previous term. So you're taking the last term. And if it's geometric, you're taking the last term and you're multiplying by something. All right, so these are the two parts that you need. So can anybody tell me for the one we just did? Remember, they don't state the two parts in that order usually. Uh, let me move this down out of the way. Maybe, just kidding, why isn't it moving? All right, so the one we did in this form would have said a sub n equals the previous term times 3 where the first term was 4 okay and you can put the a sub 1 first or at the end but you have two parts to it you have to tell me what the first term was and how to get to the next term that is called recursive and that formula is not on your sheet because I just need you to understand that if it's geometric, you're multiplying, okay? Everybody good? So let's try some practice. Is this geometric or not? You can take any term and divide it by the previous one. If I do that, this divided by this, this divided by this, this divided by, is it the same every time? Yes, what were they multiplying by? Negative one half. Or in my brain, they were dividing by negative two. Yes, everybody good? Okay. So the ratio is negative one half. So it was, yes, it's geometric, by the way. Um, this one, negative 10 divided by negative 20. And then it gets pretty gross. Negative 20 thirds divided by negative 10. Or negative 5 divided by, uh, by the previous term. I don't think it's geometric. Do you guys? This reduces to 1 half, but I'm not thinking that's going to be 1 half. Okay, it's like 2 thirds or something. So this is just a no. And again, even if you just looked at the first one and said, well, they took half. And then it should have gone half again, which would have been five, right? So there was something else in there, so it was just a no. And I don't know that I asked those on a quiz. I have to pare down the number of questions I can ask, or these get really long. Find the common ratio and the three terms after this one. Okay, so now I'm telling you there's a common ratio. Can you figure out what they're multiplying by? If you know they're multiplying, what is the top multiplying by? Two, and the bottom is multiplying by three. So the ratio is two thirds. If you didn't know, you would take any, you'd say two times some r became four thirds, and then you would divide by two and figure it out, okay? We're supposed to find the next three terms. So after 16 over 27, we multiply the top by 2, we'd get 32 by 2 again would be 64 by 2 again would be 128, I think. What about the bottom, though? 27 times 3 is? And then times 3 is maybe 243. <laughs> and then times 3, 729. How did I do? Okay. Pretty sure I won't be able to do that a year from now. My little retired brain will not know those facts anymore. All right, what about this one? What are they multiplying by? It's got to be something negative, right? Because it went negative, positive, negative, positive. They multiplied by what? So everybody good? You could have said negative 1 times something became 4, so it would be negative 4. All right. So what are the next four terms? Oh, don't make me do this in my head. I don't know. Then positive 1024. And negative, I don't know. 
Okay. All right, kind of the same idea. These are given the explicit formula. Find the common ratio in the first four terms. Now, what you are doing in essence is you are putting in n equals one, n equals two, and so on to find the first four terms. Some of you may be able to eyeball it and tell me, remember this was the formula, a sub n equals a sub one times r to the n minus one. So if you compare this to the formula, I'm thinking this is gonna start with two and keep multiplying by six, right? But you're welcome to just grab your calculator and do two times six to the first power. Oh, minus one, right? It was n minus one, okay. So that would be two. And then two times six. I'm just showing you this because they will get more complicated eventually. Ugh. To the two minus one. And then to the three minus one. Did we have to find three terms or four, guys? So I have two, 12, 72, and 432. And what was the common ratio? Six. Can you do this one on your calculator, please? If you put in a one, negative four to the zero power is what? Positive one. So we end up with just negative 0.25 or one fourth, but we can use decimals since they did. Okay. If you put in a two, you're supposed to multiply by negative four one time which would become one, wouldn't it? Someone put in it. And then by negative four again, and then by negative four again. Did I get it right? Where R is what? What were we multiplying by? Negative four. All right, this one is the recursive formula, and we're supposed to find the ratio and the first four terms. Okay, kind of ridiculous, honestly. What's the first term? 108, they told us right there. And what are we supposed to multiply by? R is 1 6, that's what it says right there. So if I multiply this by 1 6, I get, hmm, what is it? 18, and then 1 sixth would be 3, and then 1 sixth would be 1 half or 0.5. Did I get that right? Decimals are fine, I don't care. All right, find the next, find the common ratio in the eighth term. Okay, what are they multiplying by here? Negative 4. So to get the eighth term, we could keep going, but there's a better way to do this. Can you write the explicit form? It goes a sub n equals the first term, which was negative 2 times the r, which is negative 4, to the n minus 1. But what do you have to have on this question? Got to have those parentheses. When you have a negative r, you have to have those parentheses. So to find the eighth term, what are we going to put in? Term 8 would mean negative 2 times negative 4 to the 8 minus 1. Somebody got an answer? Negative 2 times negative 4 to the 8 minus 1. I'm just going to put 7 because uh, 32, 7, 68, anybody? 
Anybody not getting that? You good, Jada? Okay, find the explicit formula. Easy peasy, we just did that on one. What do we write down? A sub n equals? This is when you use your reference sheet. What does the formula say? So first term was 2, then we're multiplying by 5, n minus 1, and we're done. Do not do 2 times 5 is 10, because you have to do the exponent before you multiply. The last thing is multiply by that 2. All right, and this one? A sub n equals 3 times... One third to the n minus one. Also required parentheses if you have a fraction. All right. Um, do you see here why it wouldn't make sense to do the three times one third? If you did three times one third, you'd get one. One to some power would just be one, 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 and that's clearly not what this sequence was. So, all right, write the recursive form. This is the one where we have to say the first term. So we can write first term is negative eight. Over here, the first term is two. Then what is the other thing you have to tell me? This is the one that uses previous term. And what does previous term notation look like? A sub n minus 1. So the formula goes a sub n equals the previous term times something. What are they multiplying by here? Four over negative eight is negative one half. <clears throat> and this one? Remember, there's two things you have to tell me, whatever order you want. Fifth grade sister again, what are you telling her? This one started with a two and they kept taking the last term and multiplying it by a four. You guys are so darn quiet. I never know if it's you don't get it or you're just not awake. All right, this one says I've given you the recursive and you're supposed to go to the explicit. Explicit, again, is the one on your reference sheet. It looks like this. So how are we going to fill that in? A sub n equals? Oh, these are so easy, guys. What's the first term? And what is the r? One half to the n minus one. So what should this one look like? Everybody okay? All right, unfortunately now we have to start doing some work, I think, or soon. Rather than just switching formulas. Oh, maybe not yet. If you know the recursive, can you pick out the first term out of this formula? We could put in n equals 1 to get the first term. It would be 0.4 times negative 5 to the 1 minus 1, which is 0, so you get 0.4. But it is also just that term. So we need to write down the first term is 0.4. What's the first term on this one, guys? 4, because it's this guy right here. And then we write a sub n equals? Times, and it showed right here, we keep multiplying by negative 5. 
So this one, they were multiplying by previous term times one fifth. I'm hoping these are making sense, just switching back and forth between the forms. Okay, now we gotta do some mystery work, I think. Find the 11th term and the explicit formula. That's how I would wanna find the 11th term anyway, is to write the explicit formula. Are you okay, Adriel? All right, what are they multiplying by, guys? The first term is three halves and the ratio is one half because the top stays the same they're multiplying by one the bottom they're multiplying by two everybody okay so the explicit form would say a sub n equals three halves times one half to the n minus one Whew. i think i'll be using my calculator to find that 11th term a sub 11 would be 3 halves times 1 half to the 11 minus 1 or the 10. So 3 halves times 1 half to the 10, is that what it was? Math enter enter. Did I do it right? Did someone else get that? Three over twenty forty-eight. If you were trying to do this, uh, one to the tenth and two to the tenth is what you would end up with here. So it's really three. One to the tenth is just one, so it's three over two to the eleventh. But the calculator took care of it. It was three over. 2048, is that right? Oh. All right. What about this one? First term? Negative 1.5, and then they're multiplying by, be careful, negative 2. And again, you could have said negative 1.5 times something became 3. If I divide that, I get negative 2. So that's my r to the n minus 1, and if I'm supposed to find the 11th term, I just type negative 1.5 times negative 2 to the 11 minus 1 or 10th. Is it the same answer but negative? No? No, no it's going to be a big number. Not Okay, I was thinking it was divided. Definitely not. Negative 1.5 times negative 2 to the 10th. Somebody get that? No? Yes? Negative 1536. All right, now these last ones, we got to do some thinking logically. And what I would like to do, I, I did them before I came to class, and I think the easiest one to start with is number 24, okay? So we're going to do them out of order. Can you look at 24 first? This one tells us the first term is 4. And then just to help us understand what's happening, I'm going to draw some blanks. I'm going to say term 2, term 3, term 4, term 5, and then term 6 was 128. You see what I'm talking about, guys? This will just help you understand what's happening. So term one was four. Two, three, four, five are all missing, but term six is 128. We have to figure out what R is. So four was multiplied by R once, became this one, and then what? R twice, R three times, R four times, and R five times. So four was multiplied by R five times and became 128. What is R five times? How do you write that? Is it five R? It's what? 
R times R times R times R times R is R to the fifth. Okay, how do you solve that? What do you have to do first? Divide by 4. And then you get r to the 5th equals 32. Now, there's two ways to do that on your calculator. You can find the 5th root button and do the 5th root of 32. But does anybody remember the fractional exponent that works? Because it's easier. Can we do to the one-fifth power? So 32 to the one-fifth is easier to type, but I'll show you both. If you were doing uh, the fifth power, it's under math. It's choice five, and you would have to put a fifth power of 32. And if you have an older calculator, you have to type the five in out front first. It's a pain in the neck. All right, I would have just gone 32 to the power of 1 fifth and gotten 2. Everybody okay? Fifth root is the same as the 1 fifth power, and we got 2. All right, we're not done. What are we supposed to do? Is it say write the explicit and find the ninth term or not? Okay. I'll find the, anyway, let's write the explicit. The first, any term in this particular sequence, you would start with the first term, which was what? They gave it to us. Four times, what did we just figure out R is? Two to the N minus one. So now how can we find the ninth term? Put in a nine. Can you on your calculator type a sub 9 would be 4 times 2 to the 9 minus 1 or 8th. I got 1024. Anybody? A sub 9, that's supposed to be an A, equals 1024. Sorry, I didn't write that very nicely. All right, then which one did I say we should do next? 25. Um, can I squeeze it on here, guys? This time they tell us which terms. We don't know one, we don't know two. We know three is nine and four is 27. That's kind of good news because it means what? How many times did they multiply by something? Yeah, just one time, right? And it was three that they multiplied by to get from that term to that term. So R is three. How do we go backwards? If we want to go back and find term one. What do we have to do? Divide by three. Everybody okay? So divide by three would be three. Divide by three would be one. So how do we write the arithmetic, or the, yeah, let's write a, no, the explicit geometric formula would say the first term was one times the ratio, which was three to the n minus one, which by the way, the, when you multiply by one, it does nothing. So you could have just written it like this. Um, how do we find the 11th term then? Three to the 10th, which is something kind of big. 59054. Someone else get that? Did, did I do, I did 11 instead of 10, didn't I? Did I, I don't know what I did. Is that right? Did I write it down wrong? I got that too. I wrote it down wrong. Okay, tell me again. 59049? Okay. See, that's what happens when I can't see my screen. Thank you. The notes won't make much sense if I write them down wrong. All right, now we're going to go back and try 22. 
On number 22, they told us we don't know term one, we know term two, we don't know three or four, but we know term five. How can we figure this out? Negative 2 was multiplied by what? Yeah, R three times to get to 16. When we divide, we get R cubed is negative 8. Can you cube root a negative number? The answer is yes, right? Because it's a cube root, not a square root. You can. So you can do negative 2 to the 1 third power, or you can do cubed root. Cubed root actually is under the math button. It's choice 4. The cubed root of negative 8 is just negative 2. So r is negative 2. All right, now we still have to do what, though, to write our sequence? Go back and find the first term. Well, if we we're multiplying by negative 2, this one would have been 4 times negative 2 would be negative 8. But going backwards, what do we get? Just 1. So this sequence is the first term of 1 times the ratio of negative 2 to the n minus 1 which because multiplying by one does nothing, you could write as just negative two to the n minus one. You can't get rid of those parentheses. They have to be there. And then we're supposed to find the 10th term. Negative two to the 10 minus one. I think this should be negative. Negative 2 to the ninth. Negative 5, 12. Anybody else? Okay. We're not going to worry about 23. We got this. We got this. All right. So what I would suggest you do tonight is 4A, either the evens or the odds, and then tomorrow when you come to class and we have a work day, you can go back and finish worksheet two and four, the ones you didn't do yet, just because it's a good time to go back and revisit the difference between arithmetic and geometric if you do them some of each tomorrow in class, okay? But tomorrow's a work day, so if you're not here because you're taking, what is tomorrow? Is it a push or something? Or is it yes? So some of you are gone for that test. So it's just a work day. You won't miss anything new. That's the good part.